Well, good morning. It is Tuesday, April the 4th, and welcome back to the shop. Well, it's been a minute since I put a video out, and I just want to thank all my subscribers for hanging in there during this little bit of a lull time. Now, you know we've spent the last three years restoring the 68 Mustang back to the condition it's in, and here's a shot of it, like I said, and if you've not been following me on that, you know, obviously everything's been documented in the videos above, you know, please have at it and enjoy yourself. Now, what we did do is we got the car on the road late last year and we were able to take it for a couple of shakedown cruises. And during the shakedown, we found a number of problems with the car. And that's not unexpected because let's face it, we had this car in pieces. But basically what we found is a number of items. Now, I'm not going to cover these items. I've already done it in a previous video. If you see something of interest here, just go to the library and I've documented it already. But there's a couple of ones that are not yet done and we're finally going to get to do those. So what are we going to get done? The final drive gear ratio. So why am I changing the rear end gears of this car? Well, this car was born as a three speed automatic car with only three forward speeds. They had to put a relatively tall gear in the rear end. It's actually got a 273. That means for every 2.73 rotations of the drive shaft, the rear wheels turn once. Now, the reason they had to do that is so this car wouldn't be doing 4,000 RPM on 70 mile an hour highways. But now that I've got a five speed manual transmission in this car, that 273 is just way too tall. In fact, turning the shakedown crews, I took the car on the highway, I put the car in fifth gear at 70 miles an hour, and the RPMs dropped to about 1,700 RPM, which is not acceptable for this car. So we need to change the gears. How do we do that? Well, you go online and you find one of these. Now, these are a gear ratio calculator, and all you need to know is what's the final output drive of your transmission, how big are your wheels, and then you simply choose what RPM, what speed, and the system will calculate your final gear ratio for the rear end. Now, I had a choice between 325s and, of course, 350s. Now, after doing some investigation, I decided to go with the 350s, which means I'm going to put a 350 rear end in this car. And I then went online, okay, where do I buy 350 rear ends? And the problem is, is a lot of it's in the U.S. I'm Canadian. And if you go to the specialty shops here in Canada to buy a set of 350 gears for the back end of this car, they want $500. It's, it's crazy. So, of course, I looked at Jags, I looked at uh, Summit Racing, I looked at CJ Pony Parts. All of them U.S. cost, I have to put the exchange and I put the delivery, everything in there. Well, just as a fluke, I go on Amazon again, Amazon.ca, and I find a set of Richmond 350s for $235 Canadian free delivery. You can't go wrong with that. So I've got the gears in hand. All I'm waiting for is the rebuild kit. So I've got the Richmond rebuild kit on its way which of course has all of the uh, bearings in it, the crust sleeve, all of the things I'm gonna need, the spacers, in order to get the new gear set put on this car. I've already got the hydraulic um, press, so I'll be able to press the bearings on. So basically, I'm just waiting for that kit. Soon as it arrives, you and I will be back under this car and we're gonna change the rear end out. Hope you enjoyed the short video and the quick update. If so, hit that like button and I'll see you under the car.